Ryan Garcia right now. Um, we let Ryan Garcia go worry about everybody else and go be all over the place with it. My main focus is him and being victorious. And then um, after that, like, like everybody knows. I'm the type of guy I will fight anybody. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really that. Yeah. So after that, we'll see what's next. Are you showing it? I mean, I can speak loud of words. I proved that yeah. these guys, they, they, they say that they will fight anybody and do it, but they're not fighting nobody. Like, these guys are, are, are around, are around my weight. And at the end of the day, you got to take your hat off to Ryan for fighting me. At a point, you had to. But now, yeah. with all these antiques to where it's like, oh, he's not 100% or, oh, if he loses, you know, setting it up for when I beat him, setting up his excuse, you can't respect that. But in the beginning, you had to respect him. You're like, all right, well, he fought me, and he fought Tank, the only person that did it besides Gamboa. Yeah, antics or not, I know you're going to train as if... You know what I'm saying? I am training. I am training yeah. as if, as, as for, for whatever Ryan shows up, um, for whoever shows up that night, uh, I will be ready for inshallah. Tank told Sean Porter and Hitchens he is going to move up to fight you at 140 without a rehydration clause. Uh, what's your thoughts? I mean, that's that's what um that's what we've been saying. So and, and that's what he said. Like I said, after Ryan, we'll see what's, we'll, we'll see if, if, if that fight, we can make that fight. Yeah. I want to switch it to another interesting fighter that we all know, Mr. Tiafimo Lopez. Tiafimo said he wanted to fight. He wanted twenty million to fight you because he's the A side. Yeah. Is that what's holding up the fight? Yeah, I mean that was a long time ago, right? When, was, when, when he said that. He did. He's, yeah. 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 So. Um, you know, um, it's a different time now, which he was never the A side then neither. But um, it's a different, it's a different time now, and um, that's, a, that's a fight that I would, that I would like to make too. Eventually, you know, after this, after I'm victorious in this fight. Um, but like I said, my main focus is Ryan Garcia. You were one of the few fighters who called out Matias to fight. If you can't get any of the big names, is that the fight you want this year? Yeah, um, like I said, I'm willing to fight the, the, the best fighters in the world, the, 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 the biggest fights. Uh, if it makes sense, then yeah, we can get home. But like I said, you know, I'm, I don't want to keep talking about you know, future opponents and yeah. I still got to get past this one in front of me. Yeah. I understand that, but you know I got to ask you, brother. Sure. <laughs> when Bill, when Bill uh, reached out to Matias, they never called him back. So now that Matias signed with Eddie Hearn, do you think the fight now is going to be easier to make? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it could be could be much easier to make now. Um, you know, me and Eddie got a great relationship. Um, yeah, no, I think the fight could be much easier to make. But you know, I send my dad out to 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 make the the best fight happen. So you know, whoever whoever it is, um, I'm gonna be ready for it. What it do? What it do? It's nine oh three boxing. I'm your host Charles J. Say man, um. Devin Haney is going for undisputed at 140. I mean, I've been meaning to talk about this for a while, but um, you understand me, little little shit. I put it off, but uh, now I'm back and I'm on it. Um, I've been dissecting some shit. Um, I just been looking at shit, and we got this fight coming up this weekend, and like I said, um. Uh, pay-per-view numbers will not be a, a topic. Uh, this is just a great card, and it's just a great event. But when it was Keith Double E with the F, everybody said it was undeserving of a pay-per-view, and we was worried about the numbers. But now, all of a sudden, I'm telling you, bro, this shit is like that. I believe in miracles. I'm t this is a miracle that nobody will no longer care about the numbers. Anyway, um, I get some shit off my chest. Listen. Um, seem to be a big contradiction when it comes to Terrence Bud Crawford. And at this point, um, I think it may be best for Terrence Crawford to, uh, maybe see if you can get the rematch with Earl, bro, and just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know at this point. I don't know at this point because the only promoter that's offering, uh, that's, that that even came out and said, you know, I signed Bud as uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Eddie Hearn ain't even trying to sign Bud. Terrence Bud Crawford just had the biggest uh, win in his career. Um, he beat a top three, top five pound for pound fighter. And nobody is in a hurry to sign him. I get it. He's 36 years old. But, um, 
You know, when Triple G was 40, uh, 42, uh, Eddie Heron was still spending big millions on him and trying to get him the Canelo uh, 3 fight. But anyway, um, I just keep hearing little shit, little bugs and little shit chirping. Oh, bug gonna want this. Yeah, but, it, but, but, but if we, yeah, but bug gonna want all this money and, you know, you gotta pay bud and bug want all this money. You goddamn right he do. And he earned it. I'm tired of people acting as if, listen, even before the Earl fight, like I said, people acted like Bud was just no draw at all. How many fighters are really draws? Bud has been a top five draw in boxing for the last five years. Terrence Bud Crawford, I repeat, has been a top five draw in boxing over the last five years. Uh, do we really think Tim Zoo is a bigger draw than uh, Terrence Bud Crawford? Well, why they didn't put him on a pay-per-view in Australia then? Anyway, um, like I said, even before the Earl victory, I had Bud as a top five star. But everybody know, it's no secret, bro. It is, uh, Bud done met all the celebrities. Bud has really become a fucking celebrity ever since beating Earl. I've seen him with everybody. i just seen him hooping with uh, Gillian Wallow and them. He just done been at the world in break. I'm going to say America, but the world too. People in America embrace the fuck out of Bud after that win. I got to be honest. People, it's people, it's, it's celebrities that I didn't even know watch boxing that are just big fans of Bud. Bud earned a lot of fans beating Earl. I could argue that Earl's still a bigger name. I could argue that because Earl is a top three jar in boxing. Hands down. And even though Earl Spence fans can be very delusional, you motherfuckers are very delusional. And you still damn near don't want to admit that Bud better, but <laughs> but they didn't leave him. No, no, no. Earl, 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 stand by me. Y'all, y'all stood by him. I, I give you that. For the most part, Earl's still a, a big draw. But what I'm saying is this, uh, you can argue that Bud surpassed uh, Earl. Earl, uh, Bud has become a much bigger star since this Earl fight. I've heard so many people, uh, like, I've heard so many casual people, I just, like, like, when I talk boxing or I just bring up boxing, they bring up, man, you see Turner Bud Crawford away. The, his performance, bro, gained him a lot of fans. So I'm saying is he was already a top five draw before the Earl fight. Because he's only a, one, of, one of the very few top five fighters in boxing that's been on pay-per-view three, four times before the Earl fight. So what I'm saying is um, his name is even bigger. It's even a higher demand to see Bud fight. Bud has a whole... Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, bro, it is people that... Even at the age of 36, they are very, and I think, and I'm going to tell you this, I think Bud could reign and dominate for four more years. Just me. That's just me. I think even four, he got that Floyd effect. Because I think Floyd can come back damn near, damn near 50 right now and beat up most of these fighters, bro. Uh, Floyd could be the undisputed champion of the world right now. He, he just that skilled, bro. He just that skilled. Even damn near 50, he beat a lot of fighters, bro. He beat a lot of fighters. Just my opinion. I think Earl, I think Bud got about three, four more years of just straight. I'm too good for you, motherfucker. I just don't think nobody fucking with him. But I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of it, bro. We can we can accept Tim Zoo versus Keith on pay per view. Then now we can accept Tim versus Fondora, and that's cool. And he being paid ten million guaranteed. But we out here complaining. Well, Bud gonna want this. Well, Bud, gonna, he a bigger draw than Tim, and y'all just dropped ten mil to him. Um, PBC, in my opinion, is trying to sabotage Bud's career. They don't want him, bro. I'm take it. Don't matter how spectacular he look. They don't want him. They finna make Earl versus Tim Zoo, and that's a real play. That is a real play. Earl will get the Tim fight before Bud. Listen, you got to understand. It, it, matter of fact, I want to take, I can't put out this on PBC. It started with Bob Brown with Top Rank. Top Rank uh, Bob Brown tried to sabotage uh, Bud. Before he ever, when he left Top Rank, uh, Bob Brown tried to sabotage him, saying, I lost I lost mansions and all this and that. And then Eddie come out and say, Well, I ain't going to sign him. He ain't going to want this little shit I'm going to offer him. But the point I'm making is, um, 
Yeah, it's a strategic move to block Bud out. But look at anyway. After beating Cool Boy, he can get any fight. PBC would love to do a co-promotional deal with Top Rank for NOA. They would love it, just like they did it with Cool Boy. But look how many years Bud was with Top Rank and we didn't get the Earl fight. But look at Cool Boy stuff in NOA. Look how easy that was done. It just, it just show you, bro. Um, yeah. Promoters are trying to block Bud out. I don't know if his team peeped that shit. Promoters are trying to block him out. They're trying to block him out. We keep talking about this boot shit, bro. I don't even think PBC would even offer boots to him, bro. I really don't think they would even offer him that fight, bro. Um, Yeah, it is strategic. Uh, promoters have band together, in my opinion, to belittle. They try to belittle him like he ain't. Like, I mean, he want all this money. What? Fatback Fury be Wilder, and we said Wilder wasn't shit, but after that, he made 45 mil to fight Dirk Chisora. Made 55 million to fight Dillian White. Let's stop it, bro. Let's stop it, bro. Let's just stop it. Let's just stop it. Because, like I said, beating Earl, his stock grew. Anyway, um, I just see so many contradictions. Uh, we keep saying, and, and make no mistake about it, I respect Earl and I respect Terrence Bud Crawford. Um, I respect them. Uh, I have my critiques here and there for both of them, but I never shit on Earl. I would never, because he ain't done nothing for me to shit on. I never shit on Bud. I never shit on Earl. Neither one of them have ever done nothing worthy of me saying, man, fuck, man, Earl is soft. Or Earl is, I don't like his hesitation with the rematch, though. But what I'm saying is this. Um, Earl didn't look right. I'm even hearing trainers now. They all coming out. Well, Bud beat Earl, but you know, that wasn't the Earl. And Tim Zoo said it too. It's a lot of them, but that wasn't the Earl and this and that. Okay, but why don't fans ever say, well, in a way, beat Cool Boy, but that wasn't the, and it was in his country, and Cool Boy looked a little slow. He didn't look a little sluggish to y'all. He didn't look a little slow. He didn't look hesitant to anybody. He didn't look. It don't matter how cool boy look. Cool boy could have looked garbage or however you want to say it. In a way, gets full credit for beating him. And it made him the number one pound for pound fighter in boxing. And black fans agree that being cool boy has made in a way the number one A or B to uh, Crawford. <laughs> you can put him A or uh, number one A or number one B to Bud Crawford from beating in a way. I, I just. It's just the contradictions are just too deep for me. It's just it's just too obvious. It's too obvious. Um, it get a little boring sometimes breaking this shit down because it's just too goddamn obvious. It's right in you motherfuckers' face, but you don't speak on it. Huh. Listen, um, and Tim think he finna man. Listen, man, Earl. Listen, Earl's Mister No Spent. I mean, Mister No Tune Up Spence Junior. You need a tune-up. There is no way you need to go straight in with a Tim Zoo fight and this motherfucker been super active. Get you a fight in, bro, or some shit. And if they going to set the loop and shit up, then do it. And you know another thing? Fans ain't going to say uh, uh, Zoo uh, duck and bud. They ain't going to say that shit. Ah, nah. He fighting Earl. But y'all just said Earl wasn't shit. Motherfuckers took Earl off the pound for pound list and said he was never shit because Bud beat him. So, uh, but it's going to be the shit of Tim fight him. Man, Tim going to get way... If Tim... would, well, I don't think he beat Earl. I don't think he beat Earl. That's just me. But if he was to beat Earl, he would get way more credit than Bud got. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. It is a gender. And Tim Zoo is trying so hard to become a star in America. And I think it'll happen for him. I think it'll happen for him. Just like it happened for Fatback Fury. But, um... Yeah. I just noticed that, um... It's just a agenda. How they just try to make act like certain fighters ain't valued and they ain't done this and they ain't done that and just try to diminish everything you do so um it is what it is but like i say um i just peep that shit i just peep that shit but um yeah bro i, I, don't, I don't know what's next for bud i don't i don't know bro i do not think pbc is bringing his ass back over there for nobody, for not for Zoo, not for Earl. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna. I think it's gonna be hard for him to get one of them kind of fights. Might might have been better out fighting a Eubank Junior or some shit. But 
I think you bang with er, with Eddie and Eddie Eddie funny too. All these promoters when it come to Bud, they act real funny and I'm noticing that. But they spend all these money and all these millions. Man, I just heard Roy Jones say that Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson is a very good fight. And, and Mike Tyson is extremely dangerous in this fight because if he just touch you and land on you, it's over with. Bro, he's 50. Anyway, I mean, I mean, Roy Jones broke this shit down like it was, uh, I mean, like this was a high chest level. <laughs> a bit. I said, man, we just all going Hollywood at this point. Listen, um, <laughs> I'll tell you, boy, when Jake Paul knock out Mike Tyson, he going to get a ton of credit. I'm telling you. But uh, David Haynes is going for Undisputed. And uh, it's, by the way, Sabrina Matias versus Liam Poro. That's a good fight. Good fight. Good, good fight. I think Liam Paro is underrated. I think this is a, it's a test. It's a test. He gonna, I mean, I give him a lot of credit because Paro ain't no pushover. So he fighting, he fighting a, he fighting a sturdy opponent in his uh, home country. This, it is a very interesting fight. It is a, I got my tears winning, but that's a very interesting fight. Another very interesting fight to me is a. Uh, Shakir Stevenson versus uh Raymond Murtilla. Um I knew Robert, I knew it was coming. I knew it because Robert really believes in uh Murtilla. I mean Murtilla, however you say it. And um Murtilla been won these fights. He 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 won it. Murtilla one of them that really want to fight everybody. He just want an opportunity. He one of them. He don't act bougie. He don't try to he don't do no capping. Martilla, he he do all his talking in the ring. He don't do no capping. He just want to fight. Um, Martilla ain't gonna respect Shakur. I'm telling you, Mar I, I got Shakur winning for sure, for sure. But I just want to make, I want to put a little emphasis on this fight. Like I said, I think Keyshawn is gonna be great. But if he fight Martilla right now, he don't beat Martilla. Keyshawn Davis right, and he may grow to be better. You don't beat Martilla right now. No, no, no. Kid Kid Austin, Keyshawn Davis, no, no. Mertilla stops both of them right now. Stops them. I think Mertilla beats Frank Martin. Mertilla, the only fighters I see beating them is uh, Tanko or Shakur. I, I think Mertilla beat uh, Loma. I think he beats all these dudes, bro. And I'm going to go a step further. Yeah, Mertilla beats uh, Frank Martin. I said it, but I'm gonna go a step further. Uh, I think that uh, I think Martilla versus Shakur, um, it might be a rematch. This fight may acquire a rematch. It may be one of them fights where me as a boxing purist, you know, and I know this sauce. It could be a thing where I clearly see, man, Shakur won. But it may become a thing where Martilla lands some big shots and have big moments in this fight to where. Fans are saying, man, some are saying Martilla won, and Shakur have to rematch him. It could be one of them fights. Martilla will test Shakur like he ain't never been tested. I, I'm telling you, bro, all this capping Shakur been doing, bro, I just wish you stayed. I think, bro, that's how you going to lose. You can't do what Ryan doing, bro. This, that, that, man, this little Dauphine game, uh, a 7-11 ass game, uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, 7-11 ass Dauphine ass game. They Ryan running, yeah, on the corner with the man. Listen, that kind of game, it ain't gonna work, bro. It ain't gonna work. You need to just get in the gym, bro, and focus on your craft. You out here playing big dog when you don't make no big decisions, bro. You gotta talk to Jay Prince, and he gotta talk to his big homie, which is Bob. Let's just be realistic, bro. Just stop acting like a motherfucker can send you a contract or you can pick your opponent. You can't pick your opponent. But I tell you, I know one thing. Robert Garcia finna get a hold of Bob, and they finna talk. He finna try to push this Martilla. And I've been wondering why it ain't been no buzz for this fight. And I gotta be a little honest. I don't think Shakur's scared of nobody. But you ain't really been talking about Martilla. Like you been kind of stepping over him. You been damn near acting like he don't exist, uh, Shakur. Uh, he right there in your weight class, pimping. Uh, ain't he with the same promotion? I just don't know. Uh, Shakur has really acted as if Martilla ain't in his weight division and ain't with the same promotion. I've been saying, bro, this should be the next fight. 
It's tough though. I, I can't lock because I think I think Martilla even better than Edwin De Los Santos. I'm gonna be real though. Robert Garcia, I know you believe in him. It just certain Martilla is very good and he could win this fight. He could win. I don't know. Could be a fight too soon. It just could be. It just could be. It just. I don't know, bro. You going I don't know, bro. It's gonna be very hard to beat Shakur, but Martilla got. Martilla got a lot of sauce. Martilla slick. Martilla fast. Martilla can punch, but he can box. High ring IQ. I think that's the biggest thing that I think Shakur. I think most fans and. And fighters underestimated by Raymond Martilla. That motherfucker got a high ring IQ. High ring IQ. Cuban fighter. I tell you, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of Cuban fighters anyway. But just high ring IQ. That motherfucking box. But at this point, he punching through shit. So he's much more aggressive. Which could be a problem of fighting somebody like Shakur. Um, but maybe you need to be aggressive. Because I don't think, even though you got a high ring IQ, I don't think you can outbox Shakur. So you would have to go and get him. Dangerous fight. Dangerous fight. But anyway, Devin Haney is going for undisputed. And uh, ain't no need to dispute it, bro. This is what I've been waiting to hear. This is why, like I said, why I fucks with you, bro. Um, you didn't have to do it, but you did it. Uh, you said it. And uh, fans will hold you to it. And I, I know you will deliver. I believe you would deliver. It's not easy. But you can do it. Um, One thing I, I like, uh, that I really like in particular is that, because um, I, 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 just, I, just, I just don't believe in bullshit narratives. And I knew it was going to become a huge narrative that Devin is scared of Matias and that's the boogie. Listen, I have no problem calling Matias the boogeyman. But in my opinion... I always said, I said, man, Devin will fight Matia. If anybody will fight him, it'll be Devin, bro. And Bill said it first, but now Devin saying, I just like that you have no problem. In, yeah, hell yeah, we can fight. But not only, not only you mentioning his name, when you say undisputed, you got to go through Matias. And Devin mentioned Matias and Tio Fimo pretty much. He ain't really even talk about uh, Cruz, Roger, and Merrill. But he was just basically talking about them too. Like, I know I got to get through them too. I know I got to get through them too. So, I'm just telling you, bro, um, there is no, there is no, there is no other division in boxing besides 140 where it would be, it, it's the most impressive division to go in the spirit. It is the toughest division to go, get under spirit in. It is the toughest division. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go a little farther. I want you to go in the spirit, but I want you to reign for about two years. I want you to go. You got to go through T.O. You got to go through Matias. Then you got to go through the winner of Cruz, uh, Rolly Romero. You get through that shit, which is some shit. I want you to reign because I think 140-pound division could be a historical division. If Shakur and Tank move up to 140, bro, then Martella move on up. You got Martella. You got Shakur. You got Tank. You got Frank Morton. You got all these dudes, Richardson and Hitchens. You got Matias. You got you still got Regis. He's still a bad boy. You got all this like ten damn near elite fighters in one division, bro. One forty pound division could go down as one of the greatest divisions of all time. And yeah, uh, one forty uh, some years back, you had Danny. You had Matisse. You had Bud. Then in the 80s, you had uh, Aaron Pryor and, uh, oh, shit, shit, shit. Aaron Pryor and, uh, what's, what's, oh, uh, they fought twice. Was, what's that bad motherfucker he fought? Alexis Arguello. Yeah, you had Aaron Pryor and Alexis Arguello. But I'm just telling you, 140-pound division, I think, without a, without a doubt, would be the greatest era of the 140-pound division. But not only that, it could be one of the greatest divisions in, just in the history of boxing, bro. In the history of box, Devin got legacy on top of legacy. Just at 140, just at 140, in my opinion. And um, Devin's still young, but I'm telling you, in about three more years, Devin gonna have fighters. He looking at like you gonna have a Dula Mason coming up, Keyshawn Davis coming up, 
shoot you at 26, but he I could see him at 140 in a couple more years. I'm just saying, Devin, Devin got a lot of years left. At 25 years old, at this point, he damn near a Hall of Famer. You go undisputed at 140, you, you without a doubt a Hall of Famer. Without a doubt. But I'm telling you, bro, that, that is a hell of a road. That is a hell of a road. Um, If you run through 140-pound division, you beat Matias, you beat T.O., you beat the winner of Rolling and Cruz and become undisputed, I got you a top 20 of all time. For sure. Top 20, for sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. But if you reign at 140, and you beat Tank, you beat Shakur, you beat Keyshawn Davis when he come up, you beat these young fighters and reign, um, man, you talking top you talking top 15, um, yeah, between 10 and top 15 of all time, bro, to reign in a division like that. I, just, I think that's just phenomenal. But I'm, I'm not even saying wait on Keyshawn and Abdullah. Man. Cause by then, I think, I think, I think Devin would have moved up. If you can beat Matias, beat T.O., and beat a Sh Shakur or a Tank, that alone, just that, just beating Matias, beating T.O., winning undisputed, and then beating Shakur and Tank, no, nah, I got you top 10. Hell no. Nah. I got you top 10. I got you damn near as good as Bud. I don't know. You might surpass Bud. You do that shit. If Devin Haney win undisputed, uh, beat Tank, beat Shakur, you, you talking neck and neck damn near better than Floyd. Boy, that's a lot of shit to ask, though. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Listen, I believe in you, Pippin. Uh... But I'm just going to say I'm still a fan And uh, I'm a fan of boxing too And you would have to show me those things I believe in you I believe in you And I don't think it'll take a miracle But I just think I, Your dedication alone is why I believe in you Devin Haney's dedication to the sport of boxing is different uh, Man you you Because I think Tank and Shakira is his toughest fights uh, tougher than anybody at 140. But 140 is so stiff of a division. Like I said, bro, I don't think people realize how good Matias is. These are, just getting past, and even though I think Devin's style is bad for T.O., T.O. going to get up for that fight. Just like Ryan getting up for this fight. Ryan playing, bro. That motherfucker don't want to lose to Devin. I will say that it's rivals. Ryan does not want to lose to Devin, bro. And T.O. don't either. T.O. going to come. And his explosiveness is dangerous. I still think his style is, Devin's style is bad for T.O., but T.O. is a dangerous fight for Devin. That's a dangerous, it's a more dangerous fight than Ryan. Ryan just got that fast-ass left hook. You got to duck that motherfucker. But T.O. is more dangerous. T.O. has a higher ring IQ than a fucking Ryan. But beating T.O., beating Matias, and then beating the winner of Roller and Pig Wood Cruz, that alone is one of the greatest runs to Undisputed in the history of boxing, in my opinion. It's a better run to Undisputed than that Usyk shit, than Terrence Bud Crawford at 140. It's better than any Undisputed I can think of in the last 20, 30 years, bro. So, um, and like I said, bro, if you reign, like I said, which I would like for you to do, and like I said, no matter what, the fights I want the most is, is the Tank, Shakur, Devin, Tyler, mix it up. I just think them three dudes, bro, nobody else beats them but each other. Nobody beats them but each other. That just, that's just my opinion. That's just what I think. But, Murataya, I'm telling you, Shakur, boy, if, I think Shakur, Shakur's smart, though. He, he studied the game. And, he, and in the gym, like, fighters know. Martilla, one of them dudes that his name known around gyms. Like when motherfuckers say his name, oh shit, yeah, I done spoiled him. Yeah, he spoiled such as I heard about him. Martilla is a dangerous motherfucker. I, I'm gonna tell you another thing. If Martilla was fighting Tank, whoo, Martilla a more dangerous fighter uh, for Tank than uh, Frank Martin. But that that Frank Martin fight is still a good fight. But Martilla versus Tank. That is a tough fight for Tank. But I picked Tank, though. That's still tough. That motherfucker, they're going to be one of them opponents. Matilla going to be one of them opponents. He hard to beat. Hard to beat. 
But uh, 140 where it said, and I hate it that fans keep, we keep we keep dwelling on this 168 shit and Canelo Benavidez. Bro, this shit at 140 and 135 is way more fire. Even at 54, bro, that shit more interesting, bro. I, that's why I said I think 140 pound division, 154, them the, them the divisions. 140, 154, 168 ain't all that, bro. Even though I love Morel, it ain't much up there, bro. It ain't much at 168. It's not. It ain't shit at 160. I do want to see Ammo Williams uh, mix it up with, uh, hold on, who you got? Ammo. You got Carlos Adams. You got Janabek. It's another one at 160 I'm missing. It's a bad, it's a bad boy at 160 I'm missing. Can't think his name. Damn. It's a bad boy at 160. I'm missing. But anyway, uh, 154 and 140 right now is where it's at. Um, it's not many hot divisions in boxing, bro. It's just not many. That's why uh, this in a way he finna in a way finna win by uh, four more undisputed. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, that 122 shit. It ain't shit. Uh, 126 is all right. What's the boy that just beat up? Um, Robisi, I, I like Robisi too. Uh, Espinosa, I think that's the one that just beat up uh, Robisi. You got you got some cool little fighters at one twenty six. At one thirty, you got my boy old Shacky Foster. You got Prince Albert Bill. You got uh Conseco, Abraham Nova. You got you got a couple dudes at one thirty, bro. It, it ain't a lot of heat in different divisions. I think most of all because these dudes ain't mixing it up. Um. And we and nobody cares about cruiserweight. Um, I don't know. Like heavyweight, you got some up and coming dudes. Um, it's two dudes out the UK that I like. One of them I can't remember his name, but that other dude is that Ben uh, Whitaker. I'm Ben Whitaker though. You better get real serious, bro. We saw what happened to uh, Prince Ahmed. <laughs> Yeah, I got to fight and fight different people from different places, bro. You better quit playing. But that motherfucker hella talented, though. Ben Whitaker is hella talented, bro. But you better quit playing. You ain't going to be able to do that. When you get over here to this sauce, it's fighters that can do that same shit, bro. I'm just telling you. Nah, but that motherfucker dope, though. He dope. But you just better quit playing. That's how uh, Anderson Silva got his ass knocked out like that, playing and shit. But, um... Yeah, he dope. He dope. Uh, oh, Khalil Cole at 175. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I just remember. I just remember. I just remember. I said it's a bad motherfucker at 160. Yeah, Troy Osley. So you got Emma Williams, Troy Osley, Carlos Adams, Janabek. I think Troy Williams ready. I mean, I mean Troy Osley ready. Uh, you could see a. I'll I, I be cool. Troy Osley and. I think Troy Osley ready for a Carlos Adams or a Janet Bay right now. And Ammo Williams can fight one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to see more divisions mix it up. But yeah, 160, uh, yeah, you you put you put Troy Osley, Ammo Williams, Janet Beck, and Carlos Adams, and let all them mix it up, bro. 160 can get back jumping because it's just been dead for a while. But 154 is lit though. I can't lie about that. 154 is lit. 154 and 140, lit. 135 is cool. Other than that, bro, I ain't in a division. 168 is just all right, bro. So, um, it is what it is. But, Devin, uh, so for you to run under spirit, I think 140 is the stiffest division. With Matias and T.O. and Hitchens, it's the stiffest. And I don't think nobody can argue. I think it's without a doubt. 140 is the toughest division, bro, to win under spirit in. I don't think there's no other division in boxing that's tougher to win under spirit in. That's just my opinion. So, yeah, this is 903 Boston. I am your host, George J. With that, I'm out.